Today I'm going to make a belt buckle. So my friends over at Toys R Us challenged me to come up with some creative ways to use toys in my design experiments. So they gave me and my team access to one of their stores and let us stock up on all sorts of interesting supplies. We also enjoyed a friendly nerf battle and some very, very low speed car chases. On a side note, we're now accepting applications for our 2018 summer internships. My little sister Jessie got to fulfill a lifelong dream of shooting at me with a nerf gun from a pink convertible. But now back to making. So, one of the most interesting things that we found was this kinetic sand. It just has a really weird feel to it. It sort of feels like regular sand, but it kind of sticks together a little bit more than what you would expect. Now, I have done some other casting projects with this, but this would be the first time I tried to make something functional with it. I got some blank belt buckle hardware off of Amazon, and I twisted some wire through the holes, sort of to create something that the molten metal could eventually grab onto. I compacted the sand into a little mound and then used Legos to compress the shape of the belt buckle right into this mound of sand. I used my electric melting pot to melt an alloy that's a combination of tin and bismuth. Now this alloy melts at a really low temperature, just around 280 degrees Fahrenheit. But that doesn't mean this isn't a dangerous project. Anytime you melt metal, you have to be really careful. I poured the molten metal directly into the sand and well, <laughs> the sand kind of fell apart. So back to the drawing board, take two. I used additional Lego bricks to make a frame that would allow me to compact the sand tighter and also to have a more even top since the perimeters of the Legos would sort of keep everything in place. I was able to salvage the spilled metal, melt that back down, and, and give this belt buckle a second try. I just pressed the belt buckle hardware right into the molten metal, and it was able to sort of float just a little bit on the surface, but the wires went into the molten metal and attached it securely. Once the metal had cooled, I scraped away all of the kinetic sand and found that I had a pretty good belt buckle, but there was a certain part of it where when I poured the molten metal, the impact of that pouring metal actually moved the sand around in the bottom of the mold and therefore created a little bit of a, of a messy part. I also made this buckle just a little bit too thick. I mean, it looks cool, but that's kind of heavy for something that's supposed to hold your pants up. For this third attempt, I used the spoon to sort of deflect the pouring of the metal and kind of ease it into the mold. I also used a different model of belt buckle hardware. This one has a little bit more surface area and floats easier on the molten metal. Third time's the charm. This buckle came out great. The detail is so fine that you can even take the little things that Lego men are supposed to hold and they fit into the hands of the belt buckle. I ordered a blank leather belt off of Amazon and then used some leather glue to attach the belt buckle. I drilled some holes through the leather strap to make room for the prong and the belt buckle and was ready to try it on. Now my taste in clothing is a bit on the simple side. I'm definitely not someone that wears a lot of patterns or graphics or things like that. But I am really fond of certain types of iconography and this belt buckle with one of my favorite toys growing up on it is just right in my sort of wheelhouse. For more detailed instructions, check out our website. And if you want to see what we're working on next, be sure to follow us on Instagram. Instagram stories are where we tease a lot of the projects that we're currently working on and occasionally show a little bit of footage like this. Shout out to Jesse. Check out some of our other videos and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.